The real estate market is constantly changing. Wondering what move to make? Give Kestrel Realty Group a call. Let us be your guide. This is the Kestrel Country Podcast, where we discuss the people, places, and events all around Kestrel Country. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Kestrel Country Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Church, joined here once again by my co-host and lovely wife, Catherine. Hello, hello. We are coming to you from our living room, dining room, once again. And we had uh, some fun guests come over the other day and um, talk about their business Really exciting and interesting. We had a blast. It was Mark and Kristen Beecham from Bull Rushed Books here in Moscow, Idaho. And well, I don't want to give too much away because there's just a lot of fun and a lot of really interesting information in the episode. Yeah. No, it's fascinating. Many people probably didn't know that didn't. we have a book. Well, I, knew, um, I knew that. Probably. I guess, what do they call themselves? Book farmers, they mentioned yeah. at one point. Um, a the home for book every reconstructionists book. maybe. Um, yeah, it's really interesting what they do and right here in Moscow, Idaho. Mm-hmm. And it's fun to, it's fun to talk to all these different people about what they're doing here. Um, it's in a small town. We have such a variety of small businesses, entrepreneurs, people doing different things and here for different reasons. So it was really fun to talk to a fellow, um, entrepreneur couple in Mark and Kristen, um, And today, well, tomorrow when this episode airs, will be the end of the stay home order. Phase one. Phase one of, yeah, stay healthy. Stage one. Is the new new order. So So. um, that's pretty exciting, exciting to um, hopefully be coming out of this and getting people back to work, back to business and uh, back to, to gathering before long, we hope. So I guess, yeah, without further ado, let's uh, get into our interview with Mark and Kristen Beecham. Mark and Kristen Beecham, thank you for joining us today. Thank we you. appreciate Thanks you guys for having us. taking the time and coming out to our house to, to record this. So we've yeah. been excited to get you guys on since seeing all that you're doing over at Bull Rushed Books. Thank you. And probably lots of other things. But Maybe. I'd, <laughs> what are we doing? I don't remember. Well, no, let, <laughs> let's get started by just yeah. give us a little bit of background, um, who you guys are, uh, where you've come from, and we'd love to hear the story about how Bull Rush got started. Okay. A simple version where we came from. I'm from the San Joaquin Valley of California, farming family, um, fourth generation. My The fifth generation is my cousin's farming right now. Um, came up to Moscow, Idaho in 1996 and stayed. Um and you went to New St. Andrews? I went to New St. Andrews. I'm a proud alumni of, of the Renegade Christian College, New St. Hey, Andrews. We, we're both nice. grads. There you go. Back when, where was New St. Andrews meeting at the time? Uh, is it, are we allowed to say that? Will New St. Andrews <laughs> get in trouble at it this was, point? We were across, it was we were back across before. From Rat, we were across from Rat House Pizza oh, when nice. I came to New St. Andrews oh. in okay. what is now an H&R Block building, I think. Okay. Oh, right. oh I know what you're building. talking. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Back in the early days. Yep. Awesome. Rat House Pizza. I haven't said that name in a long time. <laughs> yep. And I ended up out here after college and stumbled upon the community. And that summer I met Mark and we were married by February. So. <laughs> and where, where are you from originally? Uh, originally from the Midwest. Awesome. So from Wisconsin. Love it. I went to University of Wisconsin-Madison. And Go Badgers. Yep. They won the, the Rose Bowl back to back when I was there. So anyway, graduated 2000 and um, yeah. Never thought I would live. I thought I'd live in the big city and do all that, and I love it. Can't, wouldn't wouldn't change it for a minute. Love Moscow, love Idaho, fallen in love with it. Yep. So, 
Well, ditto to that. We love it out here. Being from the Midwest myself, yeah. I can understand. There is um, a similarity a bit in people, like kind of easy family life and kindness. Kindness, mm-hmm. easy. Yeah, snow. it's just different. There's snow here. Yep. Snow. That's there a key is. part yeah. of the niceness, I think. You yeah. do get seasons. and mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. People seem really nice. Yeah, I, oh, I agree. <laughs> it's, <true. laughs> it's a weird thing, but everyone's like, oh, the Midwest people are so nice. Isn't that I what I feel like say? we have, out here, there's kind of like the Midwest nice without, don't take this wrong, but without the Midwest nosy. Like, there's a little <laughs> bit of that, like, Midwest, like, oh, what are you doing now? Like, really in your business? People out here are kind of like Western, oh, yeah. individualist, but still privacy. super nice. Yeah, well, bubble wrapped know. niceness there a little go. bit. Yeah, That's kind of my so. take. For sure. I think, I think we figured it out. <laughs> social distanced yeah. kindness. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Very, very spot on. Not this social distance, though. I don't think we can handle no, this I agree. for too long. Yeah, but, um, we're coming back. So how did you get so into bull books? Rushed. We're, that was an accident. Um, the coffee shop that was opening in downtown, it was called Bootsers. Um, no, Bull Rush. So you're going to go to Ball and Cross? Yeah, how we yeah, got in books. Okay, books okay, books story for, mm-hmm. okay, let's do it. Sorry. Let's I'll, go I'll, all, I'll, we're going all the back. We're going all the way back to Deep Bootsers archive. started up. They built these big bookshelves and then realized they had to fill them. And new books are expensive. I had a lot of used books. They said, well, would you like to manage the used books on the shelves? And so I just I brought some of my books for day one and then went to Salvation Army with the money that I made and bought more and kept filling up the shelves until, um, until I had too many books. And then started a bookstore because of that. That's and awesome. That, and that was Ball and Cross. That was Ball and Cross mm-hmm. books. And well, you did Bootsters, and then you like knocked a hole in the wall. Knocked a hole in the wall. And then you and some buddies yep. fixed up a spot next door. Yep. Back yep. in the alley. Yeah. Back I in the alley. That was, was a, a super cool, cool space. Cool space. Very yeah. fun. And <coughs> we it opened officially the day we started dating. Yeah. Oh, I'd, wow. I had to have a viable <laughs> business and could take care of a wife if I wanted <laughs> to... <laughs> Date me. <laughs> Date, yeah, uh-huh. which is good. How you, how you gonna how you gonna take care of her? So um, that's how we got into books. Then we got about out of books when everything crashed and bookstores weren't very viable. And mm-hmm. also, I just mm-hmm. didn't know how to scale anything or how to run a business. So, I'd well, to your credit, we were on Amazon mm-hmm. for a while back then. We were one of the first Amazon sellers. Oh, wow. and, in the used um, book category. In the used book category. So we did have some experience on Amazon. And what had happened is we had a bunch of books that a label got shifted one after another. So there were a number of books that ended up getting misshipped somewhere. And um, and so we got like a flagged warning and then a couple of books got flipped again. Um, we had someone who was handling our shipping for us and good lessons, good hard lessons. But then they shut our Amazon account down. So that was sort of the yeah, that's it. big, I mean, without yeah. a wow. small bookstore with no online presence was pretty impossible. And just so like yeah. that, we were out of the used book business forever. If you don't have Amazon. Well, that's what we thought, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah right. exactly. So now fast forward a number of years and then an opportunity came up to do used books again. And we had someone kind of walk us through what it would take to get back on the Amazon. Well, tell them the story. So yeah. you're How walking did it by the, the recycling center. Moscow Recycling really? Center. Really? Yeah. Really? So it was the Moscow Recycling Center. There was a local, I found out this later, it was a local textbook company that was buying a lot of books, but a bunch of them were damaged. So the ones that were tough to fix, they just tossed them into a bin and sent them off to the recycling center to just get pulped. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I got lucky enough, God blessed us enough, to have me intercept that and go and talk to them and say, just don't throw books away. I'll pick them up for free. And so we would take them and put them into a storage unit bring them back in banana boxes to the house, list them on Amazon, fix them, ship them, repeat. Yes, wow. so it was very... When it, was that? What year? Uh, 2016? 2016, maybe? Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, it was it was a dirty business, but we were getting them for free. Right. And so Can't we that. were taking these banana boxes and pulling them into the house, and we would um, list them, and then we'd put them back into this little storage unit, and then we would fix them once they sold, so we wouldn't put the time and energy and into a book that doesn't sell. Gotcha. Makes yeah. sense. And then we had, um, and so that was in the fall, and it was making some money. We were kind of surprised, and then that spring, I was like, okay, we gotta get these books out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> Just four everywhere. kids, dog, cat, so you know, boxes of books, and you're I like, can please imagine. help me. We've got a bigger storage Please, unit that we had gotta a light get bulb this out. 
Nice. Said, <laughs> and, and, and oh, no, it was like we were so excited. Like the little It had thing. power. It had it was power. The, it was the light bulb. And what yeah. I could do is I could put in an adapter and plug a power cord into it so I could charge my phone so I could list from my phone. I would just sit in the oh. storage unit listing things onto Amazon. Yes, thank goodness. I think that was... That was really an answer to prayer times. for me. So, <laughs> wait, to back up a little bit, like, where were all the, the books from the recycling center? Were these just books that individuals were bringing in and dumping, and then there was a whole, or were they it coming a, from someplace? It some was a place? specific company that just kind of had a niche, and they were buying books, and but the damage part was something where it was like, yeah, I can't sell it like this. Mm. And so they'd take it to recycling. Yeah, yeah. and, and particularly if they're falling apart, so mm. covers are falling off. Well, the interesting piece of that is the is the lady who managed that company. She wasn't the owner, but managed it and ran it operations. When um, when we were doing this, and it started kind of sticking, we're like, okay, I think we're going to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, I just said, we really need to solidify our book supply. Like, let's go talk to her and take her out to coffee. And then she's like, yeah, well, you know, I'm so sorry, but we're actually sh- shutting down the location. No, she's like, but this is good news. And I was like, please tell me how. <laughs> <laughs> That's our source. <laughs> Could you please tell me how? And she's like, well, I think you can still get books. But basically, they emptied up. They had to close down those warehouses. So um, conveyor belts and carts and computers and inventory and bookshelves and all of that. And at that time, we were across the street from Cannon Press in that the brick building. building. That building. The Green, yeah. Old Grange building. The Grange. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes the Green okay. manage it yeah. now. Yeah, you manage it now. Yeah. Um, I forgot the name of it. But um, so we had a we had been downstairs in the basement and kind of renovated that space. And, oh, gosh, I just remember when we started renting, it was like $250 a month for us to um, – and I was, like, hoping we could make that payment. Right. And, um, but now we were just acquiring, like, this sh- couple of warehouses full of stuff, and we couldn't fit it down in that little teeny tiny space – and also because we we're going to have to receive trash mm-hmm. in pallets, right. we couldn't receive it down in a basement either. So it's like, okay, we have to go up in order. Basically, we had to scale. Mm-hmm. We had to scale in size. So then we w- s- like went down every single road you possibly could imagine. We saw things that nobody should ever see again. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like the right sounds like real estate. <laughs> this sounds like yeah. Property. Sounds like real estate. So anyway, uh, because. The building that we were looking at was so expensive. It was, it was for us at the time. It was, you know, I don't know, twenty five hundred dollars a month, and we we were we were afraid of two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. And so, in tr- we went. We took like a month to try to find anything else, and finally, I think it was Mark's dad, and w- he said something to you that really helped us. That's right. He used a Wayne Gretzky quote. I think it's Wayne Gretzky. Mm. Yeah. He just said, "Someone asked Wayne Gretzky how he was so good at hockey." He said, I'm not that good at hockey. I just skate to where the puck is going to be. Mm. It wasn't like you, he, he just had this sense of where the puck was going to end up being and he would just go there. He would skate to it. And mm. My dad was like, I like that's, that. that's, that's what you're doing when you go into a space. You know your business is going to be in that space eventually. Like right. you got to go. So th- he just encouraged us that way. And it was true. I mean, we filled the place up and that's where we're operating out of right now. So then we went there and we rented half of it and then eventually the full building and then we knocked a hole in the wall and now we're next door and um, maybe looking at other places down the line. But so so that was really rang true and um, and then we grew and we grew and so we ended up hiring that manager. So she was our first hire and I remember we paid her more than we paid ourselves (laughs) because (laughs) she had 14 (laughs) years of experience that we didn't. And so she knew the industry. So she's been a a super big help to us. And uh, yeah. And so that was, that all happened. So So walk us through. So from recycling, fixing up books, listing them on Amazon, is that still kind of, that's the main thing. You're sourcing books elsewhere. But damaged books, right? Bull rush, what like, Con, you know, concise for people who don't, don't understand it. Like, well, what does Bull Rush do? Yeah, we fix books. Okay. Yeah. We Any will, kind of book? We, we will fix, well, we will buy, we buy books. Okay. So we buy damaged books, we buy regular books. Uh, we still actually are back into Bootsers. So that was an interesting piece that came back around where we had an opportunity to go back to our roots and put books on the Bootsers bookshelves. And so we um, have that working relationship with Bootsers. So we kind of feel one of the main things that we feel is just like finding a home for every book. Yep. So mm-hmm. what? Awesome. So if it's uh, and they can go on Amazon, but there's certain books that aren't really suited for Amazon, and they're better for a bookstore. Mm-hmm. And so 
that is something that we kind of worked on. So we buy books from all different estates, and we work with universities. We work with um, other resellers. Wholesalers, distributors. Mm -hmm. Textbook yep. rental companies. I mean, so individuals. So there's no, there's no book that we're not interested in, yep. I yeah. guess, from that angle. Yep. But the niche that we fill mostly is... I mean, we, we've said this before, but like book farmers. Yep. So our main crop would be damaged books. So we buy damaged textbooks, we fix them. We kind of have a special way that we fix books, and then we put them back into the market on Amazon. So okay. yep. majority of our uh, majority of our sales, ninety five percent of all of our sales are on Amazon. Yep. So and wow. they're textbooks. And they're yep. textbooks. So with that, is it an old edition that just gets thrown out and recycled, and a student can still use it, or or how does that work? That's interesting. Because I used to think that, but what's happened is it's not as like cut and dry as it felt like, oh, the new edition is out. Nobody uses the old edition. I right. feel like there's definitely been pushback in the last number of years where even professors be like, don't buy the ninth. You can just use the eighth. I'll tell you the difference. It's two pages of difference. It feels like it, it, it tapers off more gradually than not. Um, there are textbooks that have been out of date for 20 years. <laughs> and at that point, yeah, you definitely are looking at like, there's literally nobody who's going to want this particular textbook. And, um, well, the textbook market in and of itself is really interesting because it's so expensive to oh buy yeah. textbooks. That's what everybody knows. And so one of the things that we really love about what we do is that we are being able to fix a book, mm -hmm. but then the price re reflects that. And so mm -hmm. most of our descriptions on Amazon are acceptable or... Mm -hmm. You know, like, hey, this, this is, is really beat this up. is beat up, like <laughs> bruised and used. Throw and it like, in your backpack; it'll yeah. be great. <laughs> <laughs> what we found is that college students don't care because ultimately, do you want to spend one hundred twenty-five dollars on a textbook, or do you want to spend thirty or forty? Right. And so, like, our average book cost is about fifty dollars um, on Amazon, and that's just a considerable savings. And it also, we we have found that it really helps people too who aren't in the higher income bracket. So, it really, can serve people in like different economic backgrounds so yep so that's been something that that we like but no we we also have like kids books on our shelves like the hope center they'll work with us if they get too many books we'll receive freight on their behalf and the university of idaho we that's one of our yep. customers or mm -hmm. mm. accounts that we have and so like when their libraries are full or they have different collections that they can't utilize or something like that they'll sometimes work with us on on those kinds of things so we we try to be useful in, in whatever way we can Mm -hmm. For, so we're we're moldable, right? Yep. Pliable where'd, in that way. Where'd the name Bull Rush come from? Um, How did you come up with that? We had two minutes. Pure to panic. Say. No, I'm yeah, just no. <laughs> <laughs> um, we tried Bull Rush books, but someone had already taken it, which was really interesting. Because um, we the analogy like immediately was um, uh, Moses getting put in a bull rush basket and getting flooded, and that's <laughs> definitely how we felt. Like, hey, this shot on Amazon's like God putting us in a basket and taking care of us. And so there's definitely those moments like signing the lease for the big building or just diving mm -hmm. in and like, are we doing this? And it's like you really are like, all right, we're all in. And so yeah. that's that. But then I think there's basket. also something very like strong, like we ship fast. We're bull rushed mm -hmm. books. And um, yep. and so that that kind of it stuck. It was available. Yeah. <laughs> Which is yeah. also helpful. We know that That's always you, helpful. That yeah, helps. Awesome. So it was available. That helped. And but Lee really had just a few minutes to decide. And um, but that was like the the backdrop for us on that. And yep. um, and now the thing that we're doing a little bit with the is that Mark Mark is he's got the great ideas. So he well, came I have up ideas, and then eventually the good ones surface after a while. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> You have lots of good ideas. We just can't get to all of them. That's that's the problem. That's the constant problem. There's yeah. a lot of great ideas that are not worth pursuing as a business. Yes. Yep. Um, the What we're doing right now is, because we're buying damaged books, we're going to get a lot of books that we can't save or that they're half there, mm -hmm. getting a lot of paper. There used to be a point where you could take a whole book and um, send it in a box, get it to the recycling center, recycling center can kind of pass it up the recycling chain because of, um, well, I'll just blame the trade wars or tariffs or China or something, but at a certain point, the market for books to be recycled disappeared. Like mm. nobody would take the book. It wasn't worth grinding it up and having all the glue and all the cloth. Mm. It was just a really messy end product for recycling. Mm. And so basically there was a point where we're ready to send some more books to the recycling center. They would come and pick up, um, and they said, we're not taking books anymore. 
And wow. like, oh. So what now? When, when was that? How long ago was Last that? Gosh, a few months. Yeah, a few okay. months ago. Well, and it was funny because their truck had been down for a while. So we had like yeah, backup of about 15 pallets yeah. of oh books that word. need to get recycled. Whoa. And then we had no place to, you know. And so it was interesting because at that po- at that moment, we, had talk- we were talking to this one company who was dealing with their trash in a particular way, and, um, and it had to do with debinding books. So what we primarily do in fixing is we rebind books. Mm. And so this was the other side of the coin of like, okay, we're actually – this is something we're looking at was debinding books. And I thought Mark was crazy. If we want to, (laughs) basically it was like, if we want to recycle these things, which we do, Uh we're going to have to figure out a way to get the paper out of the books. Otherwise, like they're literally just about to become landfill if they get rained on. Mm. So you're either, you either have to rebind them or debind them. Right. So you're the, well, it's, uh, there's the old, the old reduce, reuse, recycle, um, thing. And we like to throw in repair, and repurpose and you know all there's a bunch of other things you can do but ultimately at the end of the stream you want to get it back into a usable state again like there's just no point in sending a ton of of trash off to a landfill well we figured out i mean and you figured out how to do that so basically we then invested in a debinder so a machine that you put a book in it cuts off the spine and then all the pages inside are then recyclable so those go into a big bin now at our warehouse and then we found a partner where we can take the insides of the book and they will um, mix that with wood scraps. So not cutting up new trees, but old scraps from lumber yards and other post-consumable paper. And they basically squ- pulp it and squeeze it and get the ink out of it and turn it into paper. Mm. Wow. And so then we found, okay, we're like, okay, so now our so books so are we paper. <laughs> I want to see a map of all of this, yeah, so, you know? And so the, yes. that's exactly what we're trying to do. The thought was, okay, it's not just good enough to recycle it. We should try to figure out how to make something out of our paper mm-hmm. once, once we've made paper out of it. Like, we have paper that's made from our books. This is so awesome. Unfortunately, it's about a two-ton roll or a four-ton roll. It's really big. Okay. And we're like, okay, well, who can do something with the two-ton, four-ton roll? And so then we found some um, a, another partner who can take it and turn it into notebooks. Oh, great. So How saddle cool. stitch notebooks. Yeah. And so um, this all, like, this was an idea. We were looking into what to do with paper in February. And then we had mentioned it to one of our partners, and they're like, well, we would buy notebooks. And then I got an email, like, a week later, like, seriously, we how soon? And I was like, um, <laughs> can you give me a year? And then we were looking at each other, like, I think we're supposed to move on this quickly. <laughs> So we were on spring break, you know, a month and a half ago, and they said, like, we need this to close by Q1, hmm. in March 31st. Yeah. And so, I don't know. We but were somewhere in California. We were on a farm in California at the time. And so we... Shel- sheltering from the uh, ensuing chaos. Yeah. Actually, it wasn't that bad. It, California was great, actually, in the uh, at your grandparents' house. But, so we, like, had, we, like, threw it together. And so they made an order for 150,000 notebooks that we were able to put together in a matter of 10 days and ship them off and then we've had more and more interest and so all of a sudden we were thinking about going to paper but apparently we now we have, have bull rush paper, paper. Yeah. So, wow. so do you that have the product cool. that is really cool so the product is it you ship off the paper they turn it into notebooks and then they ship the notebooks back to you it's so this is the even crazier thing is that we never touch it you never touch it well, we want to. Well, we yeah. do go and check the product, yeah. and right. all, but we don't. Once the textbooks inside, the guts of the books leave, uh-huh. it's gone. We don't touch it. Well, that wow. is, that's awesome because I was actually going to ask that you kind of answered one of my big questions, which was kind of what happens with the books that mm-hmm. don't make the cut, make the cut right? Because you, you led with, we there's a home for every book. That's what we want right. to do. Yep. And so the ones that don't make it are now notebooks, and they're going out again into recycled consumers goods. Hands. Yep. That's so amazing. Where, the goods. where do they get the notebooks? If someone wanted to buy them, are they on retail shelves? Are in a small business? So we have been working on re retooling our website. So right now, I mean, like this has happened in the last month or so. Well, right now, a text like so people who students particularly who are buying textbooks, um, people who are rent rent textbooks or selling textbooks this is a great like hey guess what we did with our textbooks right um (laughs) so right now it's been custom orders um but we are getting ourselves equipped to be able to do some offerings Mm -hmm. for um we'll have our own line hopefully and try to feature some other artists and designers who could potentially um use 
use our kind of paper. Um, so if you know any good graphic designers, like say James Inger, but that's exactly what I we've was already talked to him and he's already in. We already talked to him. So. <laughs> Hi James. Hi James. Yeah, um, he did your logo, right? Yes. yes. Love it. Yes. Love yeah. it. And yours. And ours. We're fans. Yes. yes. Yeah. And like Kestrel Country. And yeah. everything. Design. Yep. Yeah. So, so yeah. So then, so now we uh, are now doing bullish paper. Yep. So. so not yet. People can't buy them yet. Maybe yeah. by the time they listen to it, they custom can. orders. You can put a custom order in on the on your website. Yeah. That's what really is fancy. your website? Yeah. Bullrushbooks.com. Bullrushbooks.com. So tell me about the paper, the, the finished product. Do you have a sample somewhere? Yes. Is it pictured yet? No. Okay. It's a um, yeah. <laughs> because our first order was for a, a, a private company, custom piece, we just, we, we would love to showcase it, So, but we have to make sure everything, just the timing the right with them is appropriate. But we're super excited. Oh, we, that sounds fun. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So moving forward, thoughts on the future for Bull Rushed? Obviously, now you're stumbled into paper. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you see any? I'm I'm curious. Maybe this is a bigger question, but just um, with the advent of obviously since you first got into books yep. till now, there's been a lot of changes with Kindles and probably audiobooks becoming more popular too. I know I I read probably less than I did and listen to a lot more just because we're always on the go and things. Yep. Have you seen any demand for books changing in your side of the business or do you think it continues to create a lot of opportunity because of uniquely what you're doing, more of a discount, used books, that kind of thing? Okay. Do you want to do this one? I can do this one. Okay, go. Um, it, super big picture, yeah. I mean, bookstores were the first ones to get whack, whacked in the head by Amazon. Like, they were the forefront of every other retail industry, right? Um, unless you owned your own real estate, and unless you really had your own brand as a business, and unless you really loved books and you're just crazy, you're not in business anymore. Mm -hmm. Bookstores are gone as yeah, a species. Borders used to be, like, such a huge part of sure. the retail scene, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and Diversification has been key, you know. So a lot of times people who do books also do lots of other things, or they have an online presence. And so yep. it really is a key Point. So there's a big there's a big movement. A lot of small businesses went away. Consolidation online. Really huge warehouses that manage millions of books at a time at each location. So they're massive companies, but they're off in a warehouse somewhere. And where people go, like there's a last few. We're lucky we have a, a mix of used and new books over at Book People in Moscow. But if you think about it, there used to be a couple used bookstores per town at least. That's mm -hmm. becoming more and more rare. I think everyone. Austin Storm and I will talk about this every couple of years. Like, has anyone gotten a, got a good model for a bookstore yet? <laughs> Everybody's trying to figure it out because mm -hmm. people like mm -hmm. bookstores, but how do you make it economical enough to support itself? How do you keep that being in a community? Um, when it comes to like like learning, though, right? Yeah, education wise, it's clear that there's some subjects which are never going to go away from a physical book. Like, it's our 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 brains are actually our memories are actually triggered by tactile and spatial. Like there's psychologists and who think about how we learn things and how we process information. It being physical is an important component. Mm. But like, so for instance, if you're in data science though, you need a thumb drive and a computer. You don't need a textbook, right? You need a teacher and a computer and a screen. Um, if you're, so, the, so there's some places where they probably printed books. They're not going to be using it as much. Um, I think there's always going to be people who need books. Yeah, no, it the, makes sense, especially it, the learning side of it. It's sticky. People have called the demise of books for a very long time. They still stick around um, in a real way. Um, so, and it depends upon what the, the job of the book is for. So in our case, it's educational textbooks. I'm sure there's going to be some books that are way more better suited for being online or the way that it's taught is not in a book form but in a video form and a lecture series and notes and things like that. Um, but as far as we can tell, books aren't going anywhere. The physicality of the page isn't going anywhere. They'd be able, be able to take notes, highlight things, mm -hmm. go back to it. And I think that, that was, that's part of the thing that we've seen as far as more of like at home reading and books. And, you know, um, you know, we use Audible and it's great. You know, we get through lots of books. And I think that I don't know what will happen in digital if we're all going to get sick of our screens eventually and mm -hmm. just want to read. Th there'll be a big movement back to just wanting to read books. But I think that that's one thing in our business that I'm happy about is that we try to find a place for everyone, every book, you yep. know, that we possibly can. And even if it's, well, that book's going to be in the landfill instead, 
we can turn it into something else for somebody. Um, you know, I wish that everybody was reading a hardcover book or a paperback copy of everything, but there's just so much waste that happens in the book world. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you see that in the clothing industry too. And you see lots of companies like Thread Up and such that are coming up. And and then there's a company that we went down and visited um, in the LA called Sway. And they take, um, they work with Patagonia and they do their recrafted line because um, Patagonia has their worn wear, which is their used yeah. mm-hmm. that they push. And then um, ones that are too used to use, sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too used to use, yeah. um, then they get actually cut and they piece together these really cool jackets. And you can see those online at Recrafted. But um, so I think that there's a lot of innovation and stuff. But in the book industry, uh, just trying to find cool ways to to even use. Like one thing that we've been looking into is taking the outside covers of books and putting pages inside of them and making cool new journals out of them. And mm. so I think that there's there's a lot of potential for there. I know that people use books for decoration and stuff like that. But um, anyway, for uh, that's, that, that's the challenge. L- l- people are throwing lots and lots of books away. And that's one of the things that we're trying to answer as a company. I think the so all the way back to that, the state of the industry is like it's still up in the air and no one's really figured out the – the model yet mm. and what to do and I, there's so it feels like a whole new territory and which is really exciting there's no real rules to the game and there's a lot of people scratching their heads and with a lot of books so a lot of books a lot of books <laughs> that's awesome how many like how many pallets of book or well can you talk like how many books do you go through in say a month year do you have any of those processing through our facilities mm-hmm. is it 100 pallets last year nope i think more than that 120 um, I don't know. We probably had like. <laughs> it's been a lot. It's it's been a lot. <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot of yes. books. So tens of thousands. I don't think we're in thousands. hundreds of thousands yet. Um, wow. Goals, mm-hmm. but we're probably at a hundred thousand now overall in the history of it. But that still oh makes yeah, us in a the very last small few years, operation. probably over a hundred thousand books have come through the. Yeah. The oh. Yep. And is pretty much all the work done by hand. Yeah. Okay. Repair it. Yeah. 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 Inspection, repair, quality control, listing it. There's a lot of hand. So, yeah. like, basic process, you know, we get a pallet in, it gets processed, and then it gets c- kind of sent to the different, does it need to get drilled, does it need to get taped and repaired? So, we have different codes inside the company that kind of delineate which person it goes to, and then, then they all get put into inventory, and and then we use a kind of Amazon's bin system. I don't know if that's anything you guys... Mm-hmm. But Amazon bin system, it's kind of interesting that if you go into Amazon warehouse, you could have like dog food next to a can of pumpkin pie mm-hmm. um, or Filling. next to yeah, next to a textbook <laughs> or next to a textbook. And so because what happens is each shelf is its own real estate in a way. And as soon as that little that space is vacant, they just put the next thing into it as opposed to when we first started mm. um, <laughs> book number bookstore, book we number would just two. do it book number, number three. But what happens is in busy season, we can sell through, you know, 7,000, 8,000 books in a matter of a month. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden you have all these holes on your bookshelf. And so instead of having to like shimmy them all down (laughs) by manual, basically each shelf has its own real estate. So Mm -hmm. like its own number, its own allocated space. But when that space is empty in our inventory management system, we can go back in and say, that's open here's the new guys Mm -hmm. and then they can kind of occupy that so that's cool yeah Yeah. i know we're totally geeking out on the book stuff that's (laughs) interesting but no (laughs) systems systems for anything are essential and actually i love to hear hear about it yeah and just to hear about i mean that's kind of our thing uh, in the podcast is about the people places and events around the area it's like it's just interesting to hear all these different businesses all the different people what they're doing how they're making a living in our area Mm -hmm. um and I mean, to kind of wrap, bring that around, one question we just like to ask people is what's one of your favorite things to do around this area? We liked going to restaurants. <laughs> we was really fun. like restaurants. It was very <laughs> fun to see people. We liked that about the Palouse. No, I'm kidding. Yes. Yeah. What did you like about the Palouse? What did what you? Did you? What, <laughs> what do we? Well, what do you like in, in coronavirus? In a, in a dream world, what would you like to do? Oh, I'd like yeah. to go outside, please. Yeah, we yeah. do. We yeah. love going outside. Yeah. Do you have Just, a favorite spot? Oh, man. We like to go to Arlo's Rest. We like to walk around the Arboretum. Um, go for of, drives. Yeah, go for a drive. Go to the bottom of Coeur d'Alene. So that's Chacolet. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. like to we'll go around there. Yep. Can't make beer. I mean, I think we all we like Palouse. Yes. Mm -hmm. We like big Palouse advocates. Yes. Absolutely. We like so. the town of Palouse a lot. Hello, like town of Palouse. Yeah. We like to walk up the railroads. We're those people. Like oh, we nice. just like to like explore, and yep. there's lots to explore. Yeah, there's there are. a lot. Yeah, so. like, we like going outside. Um, gosh. Um, that's funny though, just right? Sitting in the backyard too with just family Abs and absolutely. friends and that sort of thing too. So. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Family and friends, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks so much, guys, for joining us and telling us more about what you're doing. And we're excited to see more about the notebooks coming up and oh, continue man. to watch you grow. Yeah. And um, people can check you guys out at bullrushbooks.com. Yep. And Instagram, Facebook, all those places. Sure. Yes. yes. We just got on Facebook. We did. <laughs> <laughs> it took there us a while. Oh, man. Thank you, Tara, by the way. <laughs> yes, hi, Tara. I've been yeah. trying to avoid Facebook. This whole time. It's kind of so. hard. If you have Instagram and you make it a business, I think you have to have your Facebook page. So Yeah. And we're everywhere. just kind of figuring all that stuff mm. out. I was like, no, we're just going to hide under Amazon and never do any social media. And then we have are now. We're in the world of social media. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to escape <laughs> it. But yeah. there's so many good things about there's it. There's a wonderful plus side to it. Yeah. I, uh, I was always yeah. seeing the bad and now kind of seeing the more the good stuff, the yeah. networking and the people. And like you said, and I really appreciate this podcast for that. It's like, people do. People do want to know what everybody else is up to. They're like, oh, I didn't know. Or, you yeah. know, oh, they're doing that too. That's really interesting. So mm -hmm. we find ourselves peeking in on other people as well. So There's surprising application in other industries, right? You kind of the, the kind of like, oh, I, I never would have thought of that. Or that mindset when it comes to this particular problem. That's the last thing I would have expected to hear that guy say. That's so applicable to what I'm doing. There's so much commonality that we don't know about until we actually start a conversation and start listening. It's true. Um, yeah. It's true. So now we have to interview you guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome Sounds to Casper Country. <laughs> That's right. We'll have you do a special episode. <laughs> I actually kind of like the idea of the bull rushed Kestrel country. <laughs> yeah, like we it. surprised Mike and Catherine <laughs> while they were recording. So <laughs> tell us, how do you make this all happen? No, yes. I'm just <laughs> coffee. Quick. Lots of coffee. It's true. No, yeah. seriously. We were talking about that before. And a pinch of crazy. A lot of I crazy. Like or a dash. A pinch of crazy. Yep. Well, good. All right. And not Kay. sleeping. <laughs> I'm gonna turn off the magic red button, so then we can have really we're just, interesting we're conversations. We're never really fun. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> just for <laughs> us. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you next week.